Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvellously well today. I'd like to talk about drum editing and show you the way that I edit drums using the wonderful world of Beat Detective. Now, we recorded uh, drums with the great Greg D'Angelo the other day on a song that I co-wrote and I'm producing by an artist called Alex Kalis. So let's, uh, let's edit it and uh, create some rock and roll history. So let's open uh, Beat Detective, go to Event, go down the menu here, you'll see Beat Detective. Here it is. Now what I always do, and I strongly advise that you do, is I save a duplicate copy of my drums. So this was the fifth take. You can see it's 05, 05 here, and I'm going to duplicate it. We punched into this take. This was the one we love. So now I have a duplicate and six is going to be my edit. So if I ever want to go back to five and see where I came from, I can do it. Okay, so let's do a couple of things. Um, we're in grid here. So let's go to grid. We're set up for one bar at the moment. Let's go to eighth notes. There's probably sections of the song that might be a little bit more complicated than that, but we will get to them when we get to them. So we'll start off in eighth note. So what I would suggest then when editing is that you put the key elements at the top. So it could be kick, snare, rack underneath, and floor. I don't always edit the hi-hat super tight. It really depends on the pattern. If you get so tight, it can end up sounding like a machine and it doesn't have any groove or swing. You know, there's no right way or wrong way to do that, but let's start by not editing the hi-hat tight and just stick with the kick, the snare, and the toms. At the moment, there is no rack tom playing, so don't be afraid to, um, you know, just concentrate on areas. Okay, so this is what I mean. So we've opened our Beat Detective. We've got, let's take a section of, say, four bars. Here's six bars in total. We started a bar before the downbeat of the verse. I have suspended the groups. The way to suspend groups is to go Shift, Command, G. If you see over here, see where it says drums? The groups are highlighted at the moment, gray. If I suspend them, Shift, Command, G, they go to light gray. Now, why, you might ask, am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that so that I can select just pieces of the drums. So I'm going to select this section here, these six bars, and I'm going to take the kick, the snare, and the floor only. What I'm doing is I highlighted a section here, like this. I held shift down, and I clicked down like this. And you see it's highlighted those three tracks only. Now the reason why I'm only highlighting those three tracks is because I want to just see the transients, the peaks, the front of those waveforms only. What there may be in the overheads or snare bottom or, or, or other or room mics or whatever, what there might be is confusing transients. And those confusing transients might give me loads of additional edit points, which I don't care about. What I care about is those specific transients from the kick, the snare, and the floor. There's no rack here, so I don't need to do that. So here's the important thing. So hit capture selection, and you see it's got a start beat of 5-1 and an end beat of 11-1. If you look up here, it says start and end. So that's our edit selection here, corresponds with our beat detective selection. Those two numbers there, the start and the end times, need to be the same. If they're not the same, you can edit it, and then when you hit um, conform, they'll go all over the place. Okay, so first thing, I go to clip selection. So I've selected those clips. My start time, my end times are the same. I'm going to eighth note here for the selection. There's not a triplet feel. It's not one, two, three, cha, boom, ba. It's just one, you know, it's all straight eighth notes. Okay, so let us hit the capture selection. Okay, and analyze. See, it's analyzing. And pretty good. I'm at 49% here. Let's just take down the sensitivity. See, it's dropped that one little tiny transient that wasn't of any good. There's another one here. See where I'm hovering. Let's pull that down, see if that disappears as well. 
that looks pretty uh, pretty darn good. So we've got the kick, we've got the snare, and we've got the floor. We don't seem to have any extraneous edit points at all there. Okay, and now what I do is I unsuspend my groups. So Shift, Command, G, and then I hold Shift, and I click below, and there all of the drums now have appeared in that group. Now let's hit separate. Great. Now something you may have noticed that I forgot to mention is I have a trigger pad here. Now you might ask, what is the trigger pad? It is really important. The trigger pad is where the edit point happens. So I've just edited. Let's zoom in on the front of this first edit. If you see here, this is my edit point, but this is where the cut happened. The cut happened as much as 15 milliseconds in front. Sometimes I do five, sometimes I do 10, sometimes I do 15, but I'm gonna use the biggest one here at the moment. And the only reason why I've gone this far is because there's not a really super, super fast part. If we're doing like 16th or 30, 30 second notes, then obviously five milliseconds would make more sense. The reason why this is in is so the cut point isn't exactly where the edit point is. Because if there's a random hi-hat laying over the front of this transient and I didn't have a trigger trigger pad, what would happen is it would cut here and then a little piece of the hi-hat might end up landing, you know, miles away from the edit point. So it's really important that you put at least a five millisecond trigger pad. So make sure there's at least a five millisecond trigger pad. The other thing is I have selected sub beats just in case. You know, there's there's parts outside of the eighth note. But anyway, so now we've cut it, we've edited it. Let's go to clip conform. Here's the strength. Now you can adjust the strength. We can make this 100%. Let's do 100% and that will make every one of these these cut points land on the grid. But you can you can bring that back. If, you, if you're just trying to roughly correct and bring things in and not trying to grid it, as such, you could bring that back. But just for our purposes here, we're going to make it 100%. Okay, so now we can hit conform. And look, there we go. Everything is now edited to those grid lines. Okay, great. So let's have, give it a listen. I'm going to put on the headphones and let's uh, see how it sounds. Listening there, you could hear kind of the dropout between the edit points. That is not a problem. I, I want to hear it against the click feeling tight before I smooth it. Because the last thing I want to do is smooth it and then have to undo it. That sounded pretty darn tight to me, so I go to edit smoothing. I personally do this. I just do the fill gaps first of all. I do the fades at the end after I've edited all the drums. So let's just hit fill gaps. There we go, filled everything. So we'll give another listen. Fantastic. Okay, so that is my process. Um, I go through the whole track like that. I'm gonna move on. Obviously I would or edit big chunks. I like to do like 16 or, you know, 32 bars. I'd never do the whole song because there's too much detail work. Once you're swift at doing this, you can move through this song in 20 minutes, half an hour. It takes a bit of time, but once you, once, you, once you get good at it, you'll move through it really, really quickly. But I don't like to do the full song because it, it takes longer to go back and correct little bits and pieces than it is to do it right in the first place, frankly. Okay, so... We've done that, those first five or six bars. Let's move on and do a slightly bigger chunk. Now, what I've done here, you can see that the transient here on the front of the kick has been covered over by the edit we just did. So we're gonna go into slip. So let's click slip up here. We're in drum group here. Let's go to this tool here, the trim tool, and pull out to the front of that section, like so. You see I'm trimming to the front of the kick. And let's go up to about 
here. I can tab to a transient, select to that, cut, highlight the whole region, go Command-0, and that is snap to grid. So I go Command-0, and boom. The front of that transient now is on the front of there. A couple of things. There's like a little overlap here. So let's get rid of that. Let's just trim that back like this, back into slip. So now there won't be a double transient. That's really important. If you, if you left that in, you're going to get a double transient, and you don't want that. Cool. So back to grid. Let's look at this. There really is just a kick and a snare part. It's pretty straightforward. There's a hat, but we're not going to edit that tight unless it becomes an issue. We're going to let it um, swing. Um, so here we go. Go out of group again. Shift, Command, G. Highlight the kick and snare. Let's take that section there. Okay, so this is 11-1, 15-1. Do capture selection. We're on clips, clip separation here. Capture selection. Analyze. And look at that. The setting we had on the previous bars at 43% has done us well again. So now we can go Shift, Command, G, bring the group back in, click here while holding Shift down, like that. Hit Separate. Go to Clip Conform. Hit Conform down here. And look at that. Another section. Let's give it a listen. Great. So once you've been through the whole song, you know, uh, let's make sure fill gaps has been done all that. Then you can do fill and crossfade. Now, let's just pretend we've got the whole song here rather than spending the next 10 minutes going through it. And this is what I always do. I've, I've got a playlist that's unedited. I've got a playlist that's now edited, but I do not put fades on this one. I do this. I keep this. So I can, see, I can see where all my edit points are, and I hit Duplicate, and I duplicate this. And if this was the finished drum track, then on this third playlist, you've got Original, Edited, and the third one is where I put my fades in. And then I'll hit Smooth, and it will go through, and it will put fades in all of those. Like so. And if this were a finished drum track, obviously there's still a few more minutes work, but if it was, then I would hit Shift Option 3, and that consolidates. See? It's consolidated. So we've got an original, unedited playlist of the drums. We've got an edited playlist of the drums, and we've got a faded and consolidated edit. Uh, playlist of the drums. So if there's any issues and it doesn't feel good, I can go back to number five, which is the original drum part, or I can go to six and figure out what the edit was. And if I made a mistake or Beat Detective didn't see the right transient, I can easily correct it. It's all there. So it's, it's just good to be methodical and to make sure that, you know, you don't want to tie yourself in knots because obviously the original audio, audio will always exist, but you're going to have to go back and find it if you don't have a safe session file, you're then going to have to re-import the audio. There's a lot of pitfalls that could happen. So just to make your life easy, have three sets of playlists. Original, edit, and edited, faded, but consolidated. Let's have a listen to that, see how clean it sounds. Fantastic. So please hit me up uh, with any questions below um, regarding the um, drum editing lesson here. I'd love to answer any questions. Subscribe. And also, if you go to uh, producelikeapro.com, 
you can sign up for our email list and I will be sending you these drum tracks. You'll be getting a, a link where you can download these drum tracks and you can do your own editing. And then if you have questions, we'll both be looking at the same session. So um, thanks ever so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and giving me the uh, opportunity to impart the information that I have that I've gathered over the years from working with so many talented musicians and producers myself. Um, thanks for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon.